A steam plant using a Castle Steam Boiler Part 9, fitting the condenser and making the piping. Before I can fit the condenser in the right position, I need to silver solder this very short length of pipe and then connect the condenser to the main steam outlet from the engine and this will make sure that the condenser ends up in the right place. This pipe is a relatively unimportant piece of work and here I'm showing how not to silver solder. I held the piece of silver solder far too close to the blowtorch flame and the end melted after which I applied far too much silver solder to the joint. Once the part had cooled to black and I quenched it in water, I started to clean it with a piece of Scotch-Brite. And at the moment it's not looking too good, so then I tried it on the polishing spindle. This improved it slightly, but really it needs to go in the acid bath. But before doing that I'm going to use it to get the position of the condenser. It's time now to fit the brass cap on the end of the check valve body. And this clip shows the condenser with the short piece of pipe fitted. The next step is to fit the condenser in the correct position. And this will show me where I need to make some holes in the baseboard to mount the condenser. Before I do that though, it's time to fit the drain tap at the other end. I fitted a shim washer to make sure it was in the right place. And before fitting it into position, I applied some Loctite 542 to seal the joint. And one more time for the viewer who seemed to be puzzled as to how the drain tap worked. There's a short piece of pipe that goes from the bottom of the drain tap to the bottom of the tank. All you have to do is run the engine and the exhaust back pressure forces the water out of the tap. I hope that clarifies the way that it works. The time has come for me to fit the completed condenser into position. Not permanently, just so I can drill the holes to mount it onto the baseboard. In this clip I'm tightening the union nuts. This is the final position for the condenser and it's just right. Once the condenser was in the correct position I used a scriber through the holes in the condenser's mounting bars to make four holes in the baseboard. This clip shows me using the scriber on one side and this clip shows the scriber being used on the other side. The next thing to do is to drill the holes on the marks that I've made on the baseboard. I drilled the holes using my small Proxon motor tool. I'd selected the correct drill size for the bolts that I'm going to use, which are 8BA. And because these bolts are so small, I didn't bother using a tap. Here's my box of 8BA bolts. I was having a look to see if I had any shorter ones, because the ones I was using were far too long. And they will, of course, need shortening. I can't stand the state of this piece of piping anymore, so I removed it from the condenser suspended it on a piece of silicone rubber tubing and it's now in the acid bath. Time now I think to shorten the bolts. I just snip them off with a pair of cutters, then clean up the ends of each of them using my belt sander. And in no time at all, with a minimum of effort, I end up with four bolts that are a perfect length for the job. Just in case I lost these four very small parts, I screwed them into the baseboard. There now follows a bit of a piping extravaganza. The first thing to do, using my pipe bending tool, is to bend a piece of pipe. This pipe goes from the outlet of the pump, all the way underneath the boiler, to the other end, which is a check valve, to feed water from the pump into the boiler. Without removing the boiler, this was quite a tricky job. The last bend, where the check valve is, as shown in the image on screen at the moment, had to be made with the pipe in position, but it worked out okay in the end. I just had to be very careful not to scratch the baseboard. When piping a model steam installation, it's really important not to scratch the components such as the baseboard or the engine or any of the paintwork. Once I've cut the pieces of pipe, I always clean the ends using my belt sander. That way the ends are not sharp and don't scratch anything. Three pieces of pipe are going to terminate at this position. And because the owner is going to have a glass case fitted that fits around the outside edge of the baseboard, everything on the baseboard, including the piping, must be inboard slightly. Here, using a felt tip pen, I've marked the position for this pipe, which is the water inlet pipe to the pump. I try and think out the pipe runs before I start, so that they end up looking quite neat. This is the water pipe from the water gauge blowdown valve. And so when you blow down the water gauge, it doesn't go everywhere all over the board. This pipe can also be routed with a piece of silicone rubber tubing to a suitable container to catch the water. There's one more pipe that will go to the same place, 
and that's the drain tap pipe from the condenser. But I can't really make this yet until the condenser is bolted in position. I also need to make a special support bracket to support the pipes where they're very close to the edge of the baseboard. More about that in the next episode. That's it for this one. I'd just like to say, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.